It's the early hours of the 1st of January 1919. A naval yacht is heading to the port of Stornoway in the Western Isles. Aboard are almost 300 men. These are mostly Royal Navy sailors, some returning home for the first time since the end of World War I. But as the heavily overloaded vessel approaches the lights of Stornoway Harbour in heavy seas and wind, disaster strikes. Less than a mile from the safety of the harbour walls, the HMY Isle Lair, the Gallic word for eagle, runs aground. The Biaston Thulum, the beasts of home, are a small craggy set of rocks usually submerged. At 2.30am on this New Year's Day morning, amidst the darkness, they are invisible to the tired crew. The naval yacht, which was engaged as a troop transport, had left Kyle of Lochalsh at 7.30 that evening. No passenger lists had been compiled when her ropes were cast off and she made her way up the Sound of Rassi. The Isle Air's captain, Richard Mason, had never navigated his vessel into Stornoway Harbour at night, but he must have known the challenge ahead. Even in daylight, Skippers have to keep their wits about them as they navigate the difficult route into the harbour. Some of the sailors below, who had been fishermen before the war started, went on deck and were left bewildered by the course chartered by the captain. At that moment, the wind strengthened, driving in towards the yacht's stern and driving it towards the Biaston. A sickening, loud crunch vibrated around the hull as the Isle Air struck the rocks. The seas became relentless. One lifeboat that was launched was immediately broken apart as it was hit by a massive sea breaker. Donald Murray couldn't quite believe how quickly the ship began to break apart as she was hit by wave after wave. You cannot comprehend the ferocity of the sea that night, Donald would later recall. A fellow Lewis man, John McLeod, headed to the shore with a rope. Other men clung on to it, hoping beyond hope they would make it to the land just a short distance away. Just over 80 would finally scramble onto the rocky, pebbly shore, wet, exhausted and shocked. One of them, Donald Gavsain, was seen by other survivors on the wave-battered shoreline, desperately looking for his brother Callum. But when he saw no sign of him, he headed back into the sea and the darkness and towards the now sunken Isle Lair. The two brothers would later be buried on the same day. Commander Mason was also to perish, and with him, any firm explanation as to what had gone wrong. In total, the Isle Air disaster would claim the lives of over 200 men. It remains the worst maritime disaster in Scotland in peacetime and claimed a generation of men from the Isle of Lewis and Harris. <laughs> 